All right. Uh, my name's Nick Wagner. I'm a program manager lead on the Windows UI platform. Uh, we've been on a journey to be able to help developers like you guys. Um, and the way we're doing it is we're making beautiful experiences possible, easy, and the default on Windows. I'm really excited today to get to host Alistair and uh, Drawboard. Uh, they've done a lot of really great work. They've been really thoughtful about the way that they've designed their app, and they've built great experiences uh, by really embracing the pen, the dial, and touch on the screen uh, in order to uh, not just create a great experience, but to actually build a business on the universal Windows platform. With that, take it away, Alistair. Thanks, Nick. Hi, guys. I'm Alistair, CEO and founder of Drawboard. And in this session, I'll tell you a little bit about our company, uh, tell you a lot about the customer problems that we're trying to solve, how we married that with the platform and the hardware, and do a bit of a deep dive into Drawboard PDF to show you what we did to actually achieve that. It's, it's kind of cool to tell you the story and the journey of, of Drawboard because we have made a successful application and a business on the platform, on, on UWP. And, and it's really cool to, you know, break apart the, the customer problem or the target audience problem and, and show you what we did. So I'll walk you through, I might jump ahead and just talk you through the, the problem a little bit. You know, a lot of people love paper in industry. My background is in engineering, design engineering, and a lot of the industry in design, construction, and architecture focus a lot on on drawings and, and documents because it's kind of the currency of a lot of projects. We printed off in my old company millions of sheets of, of A1s and A3 drawings and documents um, or A4 letter sized documents and we'd have this rigid process of marking them up and then uh, scanning in and distributing to everyone and you can imagine all the problems that were associated that, uh, with that such as you know the capital and time costs, the uh, miscommunication and rework the scale of the problem, just on this slide, explains that you know in the U.S. alone last year, 37 and a half million blueprint sets, and that's that's only one type of, of drawing that you can you can print off. With. That were you know that many were printed off last year. Then of a project, projects can cost a lot of money. One to three percent is a lot in in terms of printing costs, and a lot of time is spent by the average worker at at a printer or a scanner. But it's the secondary cost that really costs, um, costs the business, the version control, rework. But what I'm, what I'm really trying to explain here is that there are solutions out there, desktop solutions, keyboard and mouse solutions that have been trying to tackle this problem, but it's the, it's the common phrase of, I'll just print it out, that kept being thrown, um, thrown around the office because they kept wanting to print it out because there's this just, uh, this, this natural need to want to use pen and paper. And so that was the barrier to adoption for adopting, or well, for, for taking a digital format into um, uh, solving this problem right here. And, and well, I'll, I'll just talk about this a little bit. You know, this is the kind of detail that I was involved in. Actually, this was more my style of, of engineering, piping and instrumentation diagrams, but it's a very common theme across a lot of document heavy industries. So. We're talking about an industry that is so resistant to digital change when you know, we've given them um, software that's desktop oriented, keyboard and mouse, but they want to use um, uh, uh, handwriting. So it presented an opportunity for myself and, and my company to, or my startup, to work out how we do that. And there was great timing with Windows 8. We were very early adopters of Windows 8, now Windows 10, and, and using platforms like UWP. And it was right on the cusp of Surface coming out as well with a, a digital pen. You can obviously see where I'm going with this. You know, it was a it was a beautiful marriage of of the analog way of doing things with digital, and so that's how we started the the process of of uh, building Drawboard PDF. Now the kicker here is that um, I'm actually in Drawboard PDF showing you the um, showing you the presentation, so I can actually demo. Right in, right in here, right now. And I'll probably focus a lot on, say, the Surface Studio because what it meant that when we were at the were at the decision point of using Windows 7 or say Windows 8 at the time, um, which transformed into UWP, it meant you know talking to our customers a lot. What do they use at work? They use Windows, and and a lot of them personally use Windows as well. So we made it a pretty obvious choice for our company to choose Windows as a platform, but then, you know, do we choose Windows 7, a legacy um, operating system, or do we choose 
Windows 8 and now UWP, we see a lot of focus of UWP in the future. And it's all about user experience at the end of the day, at the end of the day for our target audience, you know, trying to transform from analog into digital. So what am I talking about for user experience? Well, you know, it's this fully immersive view, replacing pen and paper, and then providing them a context for them to go on a journey and learn the application without having the barrier of adoption. They don't want to go through training, they don't want to go through onboarding and, and, a, and a steep learning curve. So we did our best to, you know, as, as the Windows guidelines will try and point you out, to really take away the Chrome, the menu systems, and, and, and learning about the, the, the new environment that you're in. So straight away, we thought, OK, well, someone just wants to pick it up and run with it. So we put them into an ink mode straight away. Actually, sorry, I'll jump ahead and choose ink. That's how it actually defaults in our application, especially in a red pen. Um, and so immediately, we're giving them utility. You win the customer in the first 20 to 30 seconds, in our opinion. And that's the window of opportunity that you can, you can grab someone's attention and then get them using it. And then you know, once you win them in the first 30 seconds, then you win them over in the next five minutes. And then you win them over in the next, you know, it's a lot of time that you, that you go through to, to uh, get people in. I don't know what um, audience that you focus on, but I'm sure that user experience is becoming much, much more important for end users these, these days because there's just such a plethora of apps and hardware out there that you can that, you can, that they have to choose from. And they're spoiled for choice because they have a phone, they know apps, and so they want to use something that they can pick up and run with. So I talked you through that um, they, can, they can just start using this. So they can pitch and pan, they can ink. So that's the first utility that they can get out of our application. And we won them over, hopefully, within the first 30 seconds. What's the next thing that we want them to do? OK, so they're probably going to want to find the next tool or navigate somewhere else in the application. Now, we wanted to provide a floating menu on the, on the screen so that it simulates the, the engineer or the architect's desk where you know, they might have a palette or uh, a, a toolbox or a pencil case somewhere where they grab their new tools. So we kind of won them over with, with this disk in, in the middle here. It, it draws their attention to it. It's not really taking over the UI, but it is definitely the next step that they can take. So they'll tap that and all of a sudden they have something that animates out from it. Of course, we took some inspiration from, I actually wanted a vertical menu in there from the start, a vertical floating menu, but then you know, we're taking inspiration from what was out there at the time. You might realize that this is similar to the OneNote um, radial menu that used to be there, and, and we, um, we rebuilt our own so that we can you know, let you place it anywhere on the screen and, and choose, the, um, choose the different properties for the pen so I can change it into a blue pen. Um, again, like this is really giving an enjoyable experience to the user, or we hope, so that we have now an opportunity to win them in the next five minutes after the first 30 seconds, and, and so they can change it to... So for example, one of the things that I love about this, like you've already talked about it, people are instantly uh, productive when they come into the app, and then that radial menu is kind of hanging out, catches the user's attention, and then it kind of invites them in to start playing with it. And as they play with it, they start learning more about how to do stuff, and they keep getting better and better at the app. That's right, yeah. It's about inviting them into doing the next thing. So, yeah, we want them to use the pen. We built a lot of the application around, around the pen because that is the, the real core of the problem that we're trying to solve in industry. But then, yeah, we got them into a digital world. They're thinking, OK, well, this is great. What else can I do? So then we add some other PDF annotation tools that, that are available. And, and it's in the same context as the, the radio, as the radial menu. So they'll start to explore and hopefully have a good time and, and, and find what they're after and you know, start adding things. We'll have context menus at the bottom that is easy for tablet and, and touch. One of the great things about UWP is that you know that they're going to be used across desktop and, and mobile. Um, uh, or tablet, and then eventually getting into larger screens, Surface Hub, Surface Studio. So we're providing a, a good user experience that can accommodate for everyone. Then, OK, so there's a lot of tools in there. I'd love to walk you through them, but let's jump into you know, the next thing, the top left-hand side corner. Hamburger is something that's pretty um, ubiquitous across many apps. And so here I can jump into um, different tabs and, and see what pages are open. Um, but let me actually jump into something that I prepared earlier, which is this is actually from my university days. Um, I took an engineering drawing that I did during university, and I marked it up with some common, some common um, markups in industry. So you can see that 
using Surface and, and UWP, we're providing that experience where they can actually replicate pen and paper. I show this to engineering firms and, and people out there in the field and they, you know, their mind is blown that you can actually achieve the handwriting that you would get on, on a typical pen and uh, paper method. So, I think you're even doing better than pen and paper. If you look at this, like when you try to make those same marks, like you have much better handwriting than me because if I tried to do this, it would be awful. But when you zoom in like that, you can make those very detailed interactions. That's right. So I can, um, I can adjust the, the thickness to something that's um, you know, really thin and really get into the vector content so that um, yeah, everything's there. And then, of course, all the metadata is associated to that as well. So I can see who did, the, who did it, when they did it, copy, paste, do a whole bunch of operations that you, you can't do with, with pen and paper, which is you know, the holy glory for, for so many people in the, in the field there. So, so these are the, some of the ways that um, we identified the problem and really focused in on, on bits and pieces of, of the solution, you know, winning, the, winning them over in the first 30 seconds, five minutes, and then also focusing on the core problem, which is the pen. So building the application around, around the pen. So that was for us the utility for the for the user. And then build the experience around that. Don't overwhelm them from the start. And that's one of the things about UWP. It gives you that opportunity. You've got the full real estate. It's smooth. It's um, it, it's it's a beautiful UI that you can build. Um, and then once you do build a UWP app. What we could do, or sorry, what everyone can do is to put it into the Windows Store. And I know that you know, stores are pretty ubiquitous th these days, but being on the dev side, it's actually amazing what you can achieve with it. So all you need to do is submit it to one entity. You, know, you submit it to the store, and then all of a sudden, within hours, it's uh, immediately available to millions of people across the world. And you can, you can have the confidence that you know, the Windows Store is, is doing its thing and distributing fixing, fixing um, uh, well, sorry, if you have any updates that you need to submit, then they'll, they'll distribute, uh, distribute that to everyone as well. It's great that you can have coverage across the world. Like, I talk to people back home in Australia, and they say, okay, well, who's your largest audience? Surely it's, you know, 50% Australian, or say if you're focusing on America, then, uh, then it's 50% or more in America. But my answer is that, no, we're pretty evenly spread across, um, proportionally across the global population that we can, you know, we have users in, in the Bahamas and, and, and everywhere in Europe. And, and that's when you first submit the app to the store. It becomes available to everyone and, and, and it's really amazing. And then you can start to A-B test on different countries. You can put flash sales to, to certain countries and test out the pricing differences there. Um, and, it, and it's a good way to centralize all that effort because otherwise you'd have to do manual uh, sales and marketing, which is, which is a really difficult effort. And, and then they introduced something really recently which we take really good use of, which is the flight program. So that means that we can beta test our, our application. And so we can invite users into a flight, get them to test it out. We provide a user voice uh, forum for people to give back uh, feedback. And then we can work on any inconsistencies, bugs, and, and underperformance and, and provide that back into the application before we actually go public with it. So there's a number of cool things in, in the Windows Store that's really helping us um, yeah, build, build our business uh, uh, around the application. Um, While you're uh, playing around with the UI again, do you want to yep. show some of the integration you have with the dial? I totally forgot. So one of the things that we did was uh, once we understood that the studio was coming out, then we had the opportunity to work on some of the cool things with the, with the dial. And thinking about the dial and our target audience, you know, design and construction, what do, they do, what do they want to do most? And they're heavily involved in geometry. So we can provide a number of tools. And providing an experience with the dial is about keeping them in the flow. So while they have their hand on the, on the stylus, then they can, have their, um, they can have the other hand, the non-dominant hand, on the dial and put them into a protractor mode as the primary mode where they can go into. This lets them set an angle and I don't have the studio in front of me uh, that I can, I can place this on screen, but I have an emulator here so you can kind of see it where I can move the dial across the screen, set it to where I need it to be, and then, um, and then set the angle and I can get really good uh, fine angular uh, granulation. And then when I'm happy with that, I can, assuming that I'm in pen mode, I'll just make sure I am. Um, I am, yep. So then I can rule lines um, straight in and, and that will update my measurement as well. 
as I zoom in. So if I find an area where I can um, rule a line, then, then away I go. Um, the other things that we, we provided with the, with the dial is a way to um, change the properties of the pen. So, you know, I don't have to go back into the radial menu all the time. I can now, um, I'll just zoom back out. I'll get rid of this actually. I can change the thickness of the pen as I go. So it's a really great, great way of, you know, providing another degree of freedom for the user to, to work with the document and, and, and their pen. So there's a number of cool things that we are able to do with the, with the dial and it was really great to work with the, with the Microsoft team uh, with the dial because we're an early adopter. You know, you can, you can uh, find opportunities to, to work with uh, some of the Microsoft team and, and, and get their input into you know, what we need to do with some of the APIs and, and the dial was one project that we did uh, with them and we got a lot of uh, you know, good, uh, uh, good mileage out of that one. Yeah, uh, actually the way you guys connect, connected with us was a pretty fun story. Um, we've got a, a Twitter feed that we use, uh, at Windows UI, and we go ahead and we post some of our samples out there, and then we've got folks who are starting to share some of the work they were doing. Uh, so Justin, one of the, the lead UX developers for you guys, he started posting a bunch of stuff back, and, and we took notice. And so from that, we reached out, we formed a connection, and we started working together about, I don't know, six or eight weeks ago. Um, you should come back, check out the bull clip talk later in the afternoon. Um, they go through a bunch of the kind of the user experience stuff. If you guys are interested in anything like that, uh, you should definitely check out the Twitter feed. Uh, you can check us out over at Beautiful UX. Um, we've got links for you guys. You can go uh, check out some sample galleries, uh, some open source code that you can go and play with. Uh, it's a good time. Right. So. Thanks, guys. Thanks.